Hello, everybody. My name is Caterina Marchio. I am a molecular pathologist working at the University of Turin and precisely at the pathology unit of Candiolo Cancer Institute. In this video, we will have a recap of the pros and cons of how we uh, use uh, uh, techniques to detect intract gene fusion in non-small cell lung cancer specimen. So first of all, uh, let's just introduce NTRAC genes. Uh, these are three members of this NTRAC uh, family, and they are NTRAC 1, 2, and 3. They encode for uh, three different proteins, and they map as genes on different chromosomal locations. They belong to this family of uh, tyrosine kinases uh, that are actually playing a role during, uh, during neuronal differentiation. So this means that uh, the expression of these uh, uh, proteins that are encoded by these three genes is restricted in nodal tissue to uh, specific tissues such as neuronal uh, components. And here on the right hand side, you have a, a picture of a cerebral cortex stained with a pan track antibody showing expression of uh, this protein. Now, um, we have come to terms to understand that actually intra gene fusions can be detected in solid tumors. So, Tumoral lesion can harbor genetic alteration involved in these uh, three genes, and these are fusion genes. Having a fusion genes, it means for entry that the three prime region of the uh, entry gene is just opposed to the uh, five prime region of a gene partner. This fusion can be found actually in both adult and pediatric uh, tumoral lesions. And there is a peculiarity related to the frequency of the detection of this uh, gene fusion across uh, tumor types, because as you can appreciate here in the table at the bottom of the slide, uh, there are categories of solid tumors in which uh, specific intra gene fusion are very highly prevalent, such as, for instance, secretory breast cancer or secretory carcinoma of the salivary gland. So in these specific histologies, a specific NTRAC3 gene fusion is actually pathognomonic of these uh, uh, tumors. So it means that it's virtually found in all of the secretory carcinoma of the breast, for instance. On the right hand side, you see uh, a long list of uh, common tumors, um, so much more frequent that, uh, than secretory breast carcinomas. Um, in which NTRAC gene fusion can be detected, that, that's true, and we can find actually NTRAC1, NTRAC2, and NTRAC3 gene fusion, but the frequency is actually very low. It goes even beyond 5%. Uh, I would like just to point out that today we are uh, talking uh, about uh, non-small cell lung cancer, and lung cancer actually uh, falls into the category of detection of intergene fusion in less than 10 percent of uh, cases. Now, why do we are we interested actually in detecting intergene fusion? Uh, if you have a tumor that harbors an intergene fusion, uh, you are actually identifying a patient that is likely to respond exceptionally to a category of uh, uh, compounds that are TRAC inhibitors, such as larotractin or intractin. And we have approval from FDA, EMA and uh, other authorities uh, of tracking inhibitors in subset of patients that are advanced uh, uh, cancer patients. Uh, based on these premises and on the fact that I showed you that a plethora of tumors can actually harbor androgen fusion, we can uh, state that androgen fusion are histology agnostic biomarkers. So you can find this uh, genetic alteration in uh, um, several malignancies and you can treat these patients with track inhibitors. So let's get again back to non cell lung cancer. So the first question related to intergene fusion non cell lung cancer is related to the stage of the patient. If you're dealing with a biopsy or a sample uh, from a, a, an advanced lung cancer patient, then you have to include the testing of intergene fusion together with the other uh, let's say genetic alteration that have to be tested in for non-small cell lung cancer patients. You can find the reference here in the NCCN guideline that is highlighted both in non-small cell lung cancer such as adenocarcinomas or even in squamous cell carcinoma, the need to look for intra gene fusions for your patient. Um, the ASMO uh, 
uh, has uh, devised uh, an algorithm uh, in a sort of uh, recommendations that have been published uh, some years ago, and I took part to the drafting of these uh, recommendations. Uh, and these recommendations were um, uh, focused on how we best approach anti gene fusion testing, given that these are agnostic biomarkers, and we can find these uh, fusion genes uh, at very different frequencies across histologies. So as you can see here from the algorithm, there are two main questions, one in blue and one in orange. The first one in blue is related to histology. Again, if you have a histology in which we already know that the anti gene fusion is very prevalent, then you can go directly with the fish testing, you can use RT-PCR, you can use even NGS, of course, to identify this fusion. But the most challenging question is the orange one, because e, actually you are in a context of, uh, uh, of a solid tumor that is known to have for enter gene at a very low preference, then the best approach would be to see whether you have a sequencing platform that is available at your institution, because in that case, you would use um, upfront uh, NGS to test for several genetic alterations in your tumors for your patient, including and track gene fusions. What do we do if we do not have direct access to, to an NGS platform in this context? Well, it's good that we have pan-track antibodies, so immunostochemistry can be used as a screening tool. And then you revert to NGS only those cases that have shown uh, any type of positivity at this uh, uh, first step, uh, um, test. Again, if we contextualize this algorithm within osmond cell lung cancer patient, it is important to keep in mind that anthrax gene fusion are some of the genetic alterations that are relevant for osmond cell lung cancer patient, but those are not the only ones. So here, I just try to, to picture the fact that we have to look for the genetic mutation involving several genes, such as GFR, KRAS, PRAF, and so on. Several gene fusion, not only anthrax genes, are in, interesting actually in the concept of nosocell lung cancer. We know about ALK, ROS1, RAT fusion, and then we also have to test for some protein expression, mainly PDL1. Given that we are dealing with advanced uh, nosocell lung cancer patients, it is very much likely that we are going to be working on small specimens, mainly biopsies. So the tissue here actually may be the issue, and we need to adopt. Uh, strategies uh, to, to be able to fulfill the long list that you can see here in the slide. So here I'm showing uh, um, uh, some work done by the International uh, Association for the Study of uh, uh, Lung Cancer. It is an atlas, it is a very detailed document that I will advise you to have a look at. Uh, the reference is actually at the bottom of the slide. There is a full section dedicated uh, to uh, specimen handling, so for pathologists. Um, here in the table, we have highlighted the main uh, features that are relevant, so the, uh, the registration of the cold ischemia time, the type of fixative, the selection of the tissue blocks, and the, uh, uh, and the, the session cutting, the management of uh, small specimen by keeping into account uh, uh, the, uh, for instance, also subdividing your specimen if you have more than one a biopsy to uh, to save tissue for molecular testing. Another relevant point for non-small cell lung, lung cancer patient and intra gene fusion detection is the frequency. Uh, as already highlighted a couple of times before, these alterations are very rare for non-small cell lung cancer patient. In this uh, paper that is reporting the largest actually uh, uh, cohort uh, um, described so far, um, and here you find more than uh, 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 3,600 patients, the frequency was not 0.1%. So in this context, I think um, it's uh, relevant to keep in mind that uh, we know from data coming from the literature that uh, anthrax gene fusion are more frequent in those tumors that, uh, that have been described as wild type for uh, uh, other canonical uh, drivers, such as, for instance, mutation in KRAS, IRAF, EGFR, so on and so forth. Here you can you have in this uh, image exactly this uh, this message. 
and track uh, uh, fusion positive cases. On the left hand side, they are actually mainly wild type for uh, several uh, um, common driver genes. Uh, and vice versa, on the, on the right, uh, and track fusion negative cases have a, a different uh, setup with uh, frequent mutation in the RAS, BRAP, EGFR, so on and so forth. So if we take this uh, data to the real world, there have been um, uh, papers published on, uh, on real world data. I'm showing this example that is coming from my group. We work on the kind of enrichment of detection of uh, intergene gene fusion and other type of gene fusion across tumors by exploiting these, uh, these strategies. So this means uh, by sequencing uh, those cases that have been described as wild type in clinical practice for common drivers that are tested uh, in, uh, in diagnostic practice for most lung, lung cancer patients, then cases that have been described as wild type for EGFR, BRAP, KRAS, HER2, and then also wild type for other gene fusions such as ALK and ROS1. And we actually identified an enrichment of identification of, uh, of gene fusion in these type of cohorts. Here you have the driver tree, uh, real world cohort, that is the one wild type for uh, alteration in canonical driver, and there is a detection of gene fusion of about 8%. Similar work by another group recently published. Uh, this was a paper exploiting again a kind of uh, strategy that was combining genomic information. That is exactly what I showed, what I explained before. So taking into account uh, the, the, the status, the wild type status uh, of those tumor for canonical driver and also histology. And with this combined approach, the detection of rate of intergene gene fusion was actually uh, 20 times uh, higher compared to expected, around 5%. Uh, so uh, as a take-home message, I think that we can uh, use this, uh, um, uh, this cartoon, this diagram. Um, at the end of the day, in no small cell lung cancer patient, it is important to focus uh, for detection of intra gene fusion on advanced uh, uh, stage patient. There is no relevance right now about the identification and the possibility to treat uh, a patient that is arboring an intra gene fusion in the localized uh, uh, setting. So if you have an advanced lung cancer patient, you have, first of all, to manage very well your tissue so that you can um, uh, answer all the questions coming from oncologists that are actually mainly, please tell me about the status of a long list of genes that is also including intergene fusion. Of course, given that we have to test for several markers and mainly these are genetic alteration, either mutation or fusion, if we have at, in our labs uh, the possibility to run an NGS targeted panel, then that's the best solution also for the identification of the entric, uh, of the entric uh, uh, gene fusions. Just keep in mind that you have to double check that your panel is covering those genes because there is a wide offer of different panels also of, of different uh, sites. If we do not have the possibility to have a direct access to NGS, it is still possible at our labs to perform um, uh, a screening for intract gene fusion. There is a pan track antibody that is working in any minister chemistry, and then you can approach uh, intract gene fusion testing with the so-called two-step approach, first immunosochemistry, chemistry, and then NGS as a reflex testing on those cases that have been shown to have any type of positivity at immunosochemistry. chemistry. Now, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope that the information contained in this video was valuable to your uh, activities.